All right, young pledges for the class of 2021 to Alpha Theta Brains, the Florida chapter, we are a brotherhood of men. You have subjected yourselves to public embarrassment as part of your indoctrination, and you have shown that you can hold down 263 surprise shots. Now, you maggot walkers, it is time for your final test to be fully accepted into the fraternity of Alpha Theta Brains. Who's ready to eat some brains, bros? Yes, young pledge, you had a question? Can can we also eat the face? Welcome to Talk Murder Me. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. We are on live chat. Miss Lee Leah is talking to us. If you guys want to join in the conversation, talkmurder.com slash join. Every Sunday we record these episodes live. So uh, today we have a crazy ass story. I hope you guys enjoyed the Tuesday story. This story does happen in Florida, but Friday's episode will be the Miami cannibal story. I can tell you that for a fact. Okay, this one just is in Florida. Okay, this is, we're still not at the cannibal story. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, just because the story is in Florida doesn't mean... It's a zombie story. A zombie story, exactly. Got Doesn't it. mean that. Well, I mean, could. it could. And this is in Jupiter, Florida. This is where the season of American Horror Story takes place. Season four, Freak Show takes place in Jupiter. This is also oh. where the um, Lobster Man, yeah, that's... Gra- uh, is Grady Grady Styles. Oh, Styles. Yeah, Grady Styles. I thought it was Smalls. Well, you're wrong, Jen. Grady Styles. Boom. Oh. I am better at murder than Jen. Well, we all know that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be sitting here narrating stories. Look at this beautiful house. I mean, I know it's in Florida and there's zombies walking around. But I do have to say, I like how some of the houses in Florida, especially the Holy ones shit, on, like the, on the intercoastal uh, canals, I like how a lot of the pools are kind of right next like right outside of the house and have that that's like a a florida thing like a lot of pools are like right outside the house and then you have the screened in pool and then you have a backyard yeah it is on zillow i don't think this is sold yet it it? says off market so oh it it has sold now let me ask you something so there were there was a double homicide that happened here however it didn't happen technically inside the home. It happened in the garage, if you see the garage right there. So kind of describe this house for us right quick. Way down in Kokomo, Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take that, you to Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. Is, that, yeah, just, Largo. is this Kokomo? Kokomo Lane. Lane. That's the song came from this no No. it came from kokomo the country oh okay or island or whatever the country it's it's not a real (laughs) island (laughs) it doesn't matter we are at 19010 southeast kokomo lane jupiter florida this is the murder house murder house this house i'd be more likely to buy i like the layout yeah i was gonna say this is actually an even nicer house seven hundred forty one thousand dollars and this is a a murder house double homicide happened right here in the mm. garage. All right, let's see more pictures. Oh, okay. This is a one story abode. Nice layout. Mm, yes, yes, very I do nice like layout. It's uh, very <laughs> yeah. open. I you do know, like it. People like that open stuff nowadays. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I don't know. The shower is kind of small. Well, you got to put, you got to put, change out the glass there. Very nice. Very nice. I'll put some of these photos on talkmore.com. Good yard. Mm. Good yard mm-hmm. Nice backyard. No pool, though. Probably some alligators back there. There was a gator at the farm the other day. Oh, God. And the uh, the uh, murder that we're talking about tonight actually happened in the garage. So I don't know if we can find any garage pictures, but it would help. Here we go. Do-do-do. Let's see some of these things. You know, I did like the bathroom in that house, too, the master bath. I like so that they had mm-hmm. the tub and shower. Oh, this one says it, it sold for 460000 but it was listed at seven hundred thousand. So this is the definitely, estimate, yeah. This is definitely a someone got murdered up in this bitch type of shit right here. Mm. You know, I mean, sold for four hundred sixty thousand dollars. HOA fee thirty four dollars. That's not bad. No, that's not no. bad. It's actually, really good. Hey, I mean, going forward, I may look at it. <laughs> you think about HOAs very differently now with your neighbor. Yeah, my 
neighbor with a lime green fence. All right. So tonight, that house right there that you just saw, 19010 Southeast Kokomo Lane, Jupiter, Florida, 33458, home of Michelle Karen, who was born on March 14th, 1963, and John Joseph Stevens, the husband, born on July 2nd, 1957, so an older couple couple there across the street is a jeffrey michael fisher who came to the aid and rescue of his neighbors he was born in 1968 he was also injured but not killed he was transported to saint mary's hospital so tonight before i break this down because we're going to go into a lot of things with this case but the gist of it and an assailant catches the wife the uh the woman that lives there karen in the garage at night this is in the evening time and then the husband comes out this this assailant kills both husband and wife and severely maims the neighbor who came out after he heard the screaming what you're hearing now is a 911 call from the neighbor that went to help. This is August 15th, 2016. 911, you need fire, police, or medical. Oh. Uh, please, and medical. And medical on the line, it's late, sir. Don't, don't, don't open that, don't open that. Fire rescue, what's your address? Young man. Beating up a woman across the street. Okay, everybody. Okay, the 911 call. This is from the neighbor who was also very severely beaten. He was not killed, though. He calls 911 and says, Young man beating the neighbor across the street. Outside or in a house? It's in a garage. Okay, can you tell if he has any weapons? Um, I think he had a knife, but I'm not positive. Are, are either of them injured? Can you tell from where you are? Yes, there's a girl laying on the ground. He beat her up and ran over there. I'm bleeding profusely here at the moment. Okay. I don't know what happened. All right, can you tell stabbed. if she's conscious or is she unconscious? Say again? Can you tell if she's conscious? No, it does not appear so, no. Okay, and how? what kind of injuries do you have? Uh, I've been stabbed in the back. With a knife? Yes, I believe so. It was tough okay. to tell. Okay, you couldn't tell how long it was or anything? You can hear the ambulance? And please, yeah, we're quick, sending please. them. We're sending them. And where is he? Is he yeah, I think in he's the area in the garage, still? Right okay. across the street from my house. All right. Michelle Karen and John Joseph Stevens were brutally beaten by a man that just showed up randomly. When Officer Deputy Grace Spoth, and his name is spelled Z-O-P-F, arrived, he found this situation going on inside the garage. The garage that you saw there, inside the door was open, and laying on the ground was the woman. She was already dead, and the male was getting, still getting beat to death Mm -hmm. must have been quite the scene especially if so the so the attacker is still in the garage when the police get there yeah Mm -hmm. yeah he's still there so they caught him red-handed have you ever thought about the origin of that phrase how like they probably found someone with blood on their hands yeah i was just thinking that too like that's a one of the few times that we've used that expression Mm -hmm. it's like perfect all right, let me see. This is this is from the police reports right here. And we're just going to read, because I, I want to really paint this scene before we just get into it, because this is fucking damn brutal as tits, man. This shit is more fucking brutal as tits. One second. Statement by Deputy Grace Spoff. And Nicole, if you want to read this. When I approached the residence, I saw a male wrapped around the upper torso like he was hugging him, the male victim, as if he was familiar with the gentleman. I ordered him off the gentleman. He did not comply. He told me to fucking shoot him repeatedly. I did not have the opportunity to shoot him. I was seeing this man biting the chest of another man and hearing the sound of, you know, flesh being ripped. Oh, no. It was just awful. 
Deputy Grace Zopf stated that the suspect was yelling at the deputy, fucking kill me, fucking kill me, shoot me now, I deserve to die. Deputy Zopf was the first to show up. Really soon after, he calls for backup. Deputy Wayne Trocon shows up at the scene, and this is his narrative. When I arrived on the scene, Grace had him at gunpoint. The guy was laying on the ground with the victim in like a bear hug and was chewing the left side of his face. With one hand, he put his left hand inside of his mouth, tried to pull his cheek off. Grace and he both deployed their taser to no avail. He wouldn't get off, so I started kicking and stomping on his head to get him off. The canine dog was deployed a bit and bit him twice. All right, go ahead and read the next officer. So there was a lot of cops that showed up at this house, right? This makes you just, every time, you know, when you hear 911 calls like this, it feels... Like it takes the, not that it does, but like goes by so slow. Yeah. And you just tell, you're like, where are, where are they? Come yeah. on, guys. This is what makes you, us glad that we live right around the corner from the fire station. <laughs> okay. This is the next deputy right here. And the thing that he says last, the quote that this killer says will definitely go down in history as the most fucking craziest shit anyone has ever said so go ahead and read this his statement this is from officer valerio he reported that the defendant did not follow commands and did not respond to the taser or being bitten by the canine dog he displayed signs of superhuman strength as he continued attacking a deputy performed a heel strike on haraf's head which had enough effect for haraf to start to stop attacking the male victim. A deputy was able to effectively place Haref's wrist into handcuffs and pull him off the victim. While Haref was being carried off in handcuffs and leg irons, he continued acting irrational, thrashing his body from side to side and yelling, help me, help me, I ate bad things. Now, Haref is the killer. Right. Help me, help me, I ate bad things. And if you want to continue reading. Like a human. When deputy asked him what he ate, Haruf replied, I ate humans. Ooh. I ate humans. Now, the thing about this case and the next one, because we're doing two zombie cases this week. Oh, two. Both wow. in Florida. <laughs> Ooh, Florida yeah, this seems is, to have a zombie problem. This is not the this is not the bath salt case. Oh. This is not the bath salt okay. case. This is a case that no one has fucking ever heard of. But I, it's still a zombie I case. Have not. Apparently zombies So there were no bath salts involved in the making of this zombie. <laughs> is that what you're saying? He says, Help me, help me. I ate bad things. Well, what'd you eat? I ate humans. That seems like some Twilight Zone shit there, man. You remember that one where they were the aliens came down and yes. they were all benevolent? And all the humans, they had a town meeting and they were like, these aliens are helping us out and, and they're really turning our civilization around. And the, and the aliens had this book. You remember it? You don't remember that? And then like this guy, this scientist or doctor or whatever finally translates the book and it's a fucking cookbook Sir, for yeah. humans. <laughs> Mr. Chambers, don't get on that ship. The rest of the book to serve men, it's, it's a cookbook. No! 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 Ah! <laughs> Twilight Zone was like way ahead of its time. Yeah, no shit, dude. Black Mirror of the 1960s. Yeah. yeah, that was a great fucking episode. Tell me right now, you know he's 25 years old. What does this guy look like? Obviously, well, we actually have a video. So of again, this. there were no bath salts involved. Is that what you're saying? I didn't say that. You just said okay. that. You did say that. No, I asked you if that is that what you think? There's bath salts. No, you said, you you said, said there were no bath, bath salts, salts, salts involved thing. in this story. You said the next uh, one. No, I, this isn't the bath salts. I didn't thing. mean it like that. I oh, meant, okay. So there were bath salts making the zombie. You need to make up your mind and tell us if there were bath salts or not because I need to know. All right. I'll tell you right now. I'll spoil it for you. Well, you already said there were none. Yeah, but bath salts are other drugs. Oh, you didn't say that. You just said bath salts. I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. This is, this, there were no drugs found in his system. 
Florida, you're not even doing drugs and you're being <laughs> turning into zombies. What the fuck? Maybe it's like the air or Maybe something. something on the water. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Florida, I'm sorry, yo. You got a fucking problem, man. <laughs> I don't mean to stereotype, but I sure as oh, fuck ain't. Yes, you do. Florida. I sure as fuck ain't moving down to Florida. I wonder if our friend from West Virginia, who was like, "We're not all like that," is joining in on our Florida. Yeah, that's right. right now. Like, yeah, yeah, that's why man, fucking Florida. zombies, fucking assholes, zombies. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, there's actually video CCTV video of this happening. Oh, oh, th- oh, what? really? Yeah. Do they, is it available? Yeah, well, let's watch it right now. Oh, stop. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) You're such an (laughs) a-hole. This Resident Evil (laughs) 1. Jesus Christ. It's exactly the scene that was just described, actually. Yeah. I mean, it is, dude. That's exactly what it was. And and the next story we're going to do on Friday. All right. You'll see the video because there is actual video, not just that Resident Evil thing. There's va- actual video of the Friday of the story. famous story, the, oh, the okay. one that everyone knows, the, the bath salt, salt killer. Okay, okay, okay. Everyone knows that story. There is CCTV footage of that, one hundred percent. And you'll see all these comments about because you'll see people. It, the whole scenario lasted like forty five minutes. <laughs> But there's people riding their bikes by, people stopping and taking pictures, like walking by. And everyone's like, why is no one stopping and helping them? You have a guy eating someone's fucking face off. I'm sorry, dude. I ain't fucking stopping either. Because like, what the fuck? You gonna you gonna stop and and try to excuse get, me, sir? <laughs> save a guy from a fucking zombie. He is eating his face and spitting out the flesh. You better get the fuck away. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't be fucking but stopping. But also, perhaps don't film. <laughs> like, this is, may not be it's the just, opportunity to stop and take photos. I mean, it's just fucking crazy. Anyway. But it's just like all these YouTubers are like, why is no one stopping? That's pathetic. Well, fucking you stop then, motherfucker. I sure as yeah, fuck. Yeah, if you if see I someone see with a... superhuman strength, you're... <laughs> yeah. if I you don't see... know, man. Put if, on your cape and you see, see what happens. fucking chewing someone's face off and spitting it out, and he's butt naked, the killer, you're oh. not gonna fucking stop either, bud. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Florida. <laughs> We're not all zombies. All right. Okay, so tell me about this guy right quick. I mean, obviously, he's just, he's a tweaker. You, you said there were no drugs found in his system? Well, I didn't want to say that. You made me, you made me say that. Try to describe this guy for us. Tell me what you think. Like, just what does he look like? I, we don't uh, see anything. I know, but try oh. to tell me what you oh, would think. I was he would like, look I like. Don't you, there's no picture for us. Well, you, the caller said he was a white male, so it makes me feel like that the most recent episode of um, the most recent season of American Horror Story, where the the evil creatures are kind of like all like bald and like super pale and like move like this like, like golem kind of oh i will kind of like thriller but white and pale and no hair and like a cross between voldemort and what you're describing thriller. makes me think of like golem from from um lord of the rings yes yeah so that's exactly S- what Smeagol, this guy looks right? like I'll link to a, <laughs> That's exactly what this guy looks like. I'll link to a YouTube. <laughs> I'll link to this guy's YouTube channel. He created this channel two weeks what? before he. And we're going to get into in graphic detail the whole flesh eating shit. Every every bite of flesh we're going to get into. So this is the guy's YouTube channel. He made two weeks before he ate the faces off of these random fucking people. His name is Austin Haroof, H-A-R-R-O-U-F-F-F. He is also known Two as F's, the three. Frat Boy Cannibal. What? This is him right here. Okay, not what we described. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> What's up, guys? I just want to let you know that I came to a realization of something. 
I no longer want to follow Arnold or any other bodybuilder. I want to follow myself, you know? I want to actually believe in myself. Not in... I want to learn from other things, other this people. This is weeks before. Other bodybuilders. 2016. Builders. This murder happened August 15th. Well, this is four days. This is four days before. Four days before. I real, qu real quick, I want to look at the comments. <laughs> uh, gotta eat, right? Lots of white meat. Now, this guy is a bodybuilder. He is huge. He's a, he's a big dude. He doesn't dude. look that big. I mean, he's, he's muscular. I mean, he's got... I mean, he's fucking... You can tell he trains all the time. Um, look forward how to many, next video, bro. <laughs> <laughs> some of the comments, how many grams of protein are in a human face? Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my gosh. Um, let me see. Uh, a lot of these uh, girls... Belladonna says, damn, he was cute. Why you got to be eating faces, though? <laughs> Jesus oh, my Christ. goodness. <laughs> Holy shit. It's um, not healthy. It's not natural. Neither is a human face. <laughs> but this is him, man. This is the cannibal frat boy killer. Can you imagine, dude? This so, so is this where some of those titles that we were going to use for the Tasmania will come to play? No, I've never heard of this before this. No, you're... I I say in the titles that we were we were tossing around for some other cannibal stories. This is the opportunity to bring them back. So I mean, look at this guy's channel, man. So the channel name is A dot Frost. He goes by Austin Frosty, and I mean he teaches people how to do bodybuilding. Now this is weeks before. Notice that he starts talking in different accents, which is extremely weird. He's doing like a British accent. Gotta suck. You gotta suck. In my yeah. life. He's fucking from Florida, you know, and no one really questions, like, w what is going on here? Hello. Um, Isn't that weird? Hi, yeah. Guys. It's uh, so weird, man. And this is days before. The title uh, of this I just is. I to say that the best, I think the best exercise for, uh, your chest muscle. This video is entitled "The Best You'd Chest Exercise." Do the bench press. Yeah. Fucking nuts, man. I think that's nuts. probably Crazy is shit. the best exercise for your chest. Yeah, no because shit. Someone says a movie needs it, to be made it, about him. It, has like, anyone ever heard of this shit? Nobody really has heard of this story, and it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. So that's the guy, frat boy, cannibal. That's who we're talking about tonight. Officer Deputy Gray Soft arrived to the home. He noticed that the suspect was, quote, choking and biting a male, later identified as John Joseph Stevens. Deputy Soft stated that the suspect was being was the suspect was biting the victim, John Stevens, and spitting out his flesh. Now, we're going to cover this zombie story and a zombie story that also happened a few miles from here, closer to downtown. The one that everyone knows, mm -hmm. bath, the bath salt story. But in both stories, is very important. The autopsies that were done, well, the, the last guy died. This guy didn't die. The autopsy that was done, there was no human flesh in the stomach. So they're not eating the flesh. They're just ripping it off like a fucking dog and spitting it out. So in the garage, there is pieces of human flesh littering the garage. Oh, no. Everywhere. Littering the garage because he's not actually eating it. He's spitting it out. Okay. It's fucking weird. That is an important detail. Yeah, but it also doesn't make it better. For the bath salts episode that we're going to cover next, most people think he's on bath salts. We don't know. Maybe. Okay. This is a different story because apparently this is not a drug story. This is a mental illness story, mm. which is fucking nuts, man. There was the two weeks leading up to this guy eating someone's face, the, the YouTube videos and everything. There was a marked change that. His friends, his family, his girlfriend, everyone noticed he became a completely different person within the two weeks leading up to this. Completely different. So if it was drugs, 
like I was thinking, if it was drugs, is there a drug that you can take and then it affects you over weeks? Because there was no drugs found in his system. No prescription drugs? No prescription drugs or anything found in his system. So most people think that this specifically is mental illness, which is crazy. All right, continuing with the deputy's report. The deputy stated that the suspect was wearing a blue shirt and silky boxers. The deputy then ordered the suspect off the victim. So as soon as he gets there, and in, this is, happens in both cases, the suspect, the, the killer, is ordered off. The deputy ordered the suspect off. In both cases we're going to cover, they ordered the suspect off. They didn't respond in human language. Ah, they responded what? in growls. It, this, all right, this is very primal. This is very animalistic behavior. Yes. Okay, if you go back to the, the whole purpose of being a species is survival and repu, re, um, replication, the only two things that matter, this is like bare minimum, you know, eating something to survive type of shit. This mm -hmm. is fucking... But he's not but eating yeah. it. This is like archaic shit, right? Yes. When we were, you know, grew, uh, gr grown up in uh, evolution, all that shit. It's crazy. Growing up. Anyway, de the deputy ordered the suspect off. And he pointed a gun at the suspect, but he continued to bite and rip the flesh from the victim. Okay. And he didn't know the victim. No, no. This is a, this is random. He's not even on the same street. Like, was the garage open? Yeah, the garage was open. So it was fucking real random. Just all of a sudden. That's why you got to shut your garages. There's two lessons to be learned here. Number one, keep your garages shut. Number two, don't live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already learned the garage lesson from Barbara. Yes, so. correct. <laughs> officer, the uh, the officer used a taser, tried to handcuff him. He has a taser. Like I, there's a, a video that uh, History Channel did, or one of those channels where this dude, he is huge. I mean, he is 350 pounds, all muscle. They wanted to see if he can withstand a taser. He was like the most strongest human out there. Couldn't do it. Couldn't withstand a taser. No one can. It locks It locks your whole body. Your whole, all your nerves just lock up. You can't do anything. You fall on the ground. This guy and other guys that are on some sort of crazy drugs, you know, like not meth per se, but all this bath salts, just like this. They're too strong. The, the tasers don't even affect them. So he tries to handcuff him, which was dumb. I would just shoot the guy right in the fucking head. He was being overpowered and he was about to be a next victim. Luckily for him, luckily. And I want to say this deputy was a female. Grace Zoff, that's yep. a female. Luckily for her, because she was about to get eaten too. Deputy Wayne Trokan uh, arrived just in time. Tried to rip the guy off. But, quote, the suspect kept biting the victim. You got two cops trying to pull this kid, this 25-year-old kid, off of this victim biting his face. Two cops. And he just would not stop biting the face. And it's the face. It's like just the ripping the flesh off. The sh 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 sh. Taser's not working. Fucking two officers. Quote, at this point in time, Deputy Wayne Trocan arrived and attempted to control the suspect, but the suspect kept biting the victim. Tequesta K-9 showed up. Okay. A K-9 officer shows up. Deployed his dog. So I guess, and I was learning about this, when a K-9 officer shows up and there's other officers on the suspect, the K-9 officer will announce as loud as he can, I am going to deploy my dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That way the, the suspect and the other officers know that the dog is coming out. It's like a fucking weapon. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. So he says, I'm going to deploy my dog. And then he just let it go. The dog latches on Austin's, the zombie's arm. Didn't affect him whatsoever. You have two cops trying to pull him off, a taser that's tasing his ass, and a fucking dog trying to rip off his left arm, and this kid is still trying to rip off the flesh of the male victim. 
Wow. Still, like nothing else matters, man. Just trying to get the fucking flesh. Fuck. Dude, that is wild. I'm sorry, man. That is fucking wild. I'm like just, I've got the scene in my head, like of what, it's so vivid of like, what the hell is going on in this person's garage. No shit. That's what I'm trying to do. This is, I mean, let's take another look at the fucking kid. I mean, this is a 25 year old kid. Look at him. You know, this is him after he was arrested. You know, look at him. He doesn't look like a fucking cannibal killer, does he? This is his, uh, this is him after. That's the arrest right there mm-hmm. when he's on the ground. Crazy. Nuts. I'll put all these photos on talkmore.com. Nuts. This is all happening. I mean, talk about the stress level <laughs> of this shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The dog is at this point trying to rip his arm off trying to get him to stop the dog is probably like what the fuck usually they stop (laughs) the dog is latched on to his arm and biting it like all the way through to the fucking bone like the dog is supposed to do three officers finally get him in handcuffs finally get him in handcuffs and he's still trying to just bite the face like nothing else matters he keeps yelling Quote, fucking kill me, fucking kill me, shoot me now, I deserve to die, end quote. Fucking crazy, man. Crazy shit. Deputy Trocan attempted to remove the suspect by using his taser, but the suspect would not let go of the victim. Deputy Trocan began kicking the suspect in the head. Kicking him in the head, in the face. He's like chewing down on the face of the victim and he's like kicking his head. Eh, eh, get the fuck off his face still didn't do anything began kicking the suspect in the head which caused which temporarily caused the suspect to let go of the victim but then but then the suspect grabbed the victim again and began to chew the victim's face <laughs> holy shit I mean what the fuck <laughs> Holy relentless jesus fuck man so <laughs> jesus fuck. did this guy know these people like, no i just said he's completely but what how did he stumble across this house I'll, I'll get to that let's talk about jeffrey fisher jeffrey fisher hears his neighbors screaming this is twenty one fifteen, which is what nicole Twenty one fifteen hundred hours 2115. 915. 915. Good job, Nicole. He's actually going to bed. He hears his neighbor scream. Now, do you remember in the 911 call? He says... He's been stabbed. Well, that, but the 911 operator says, do you know who the victim is? I I don't know. I, I'm Now, this is a neighbor. I mm-hmm. think it's my neighbor's daughter. Does the female look familiar to you? Um, I believe it was the daughter of the house that lives over there. I'm not positive. Okay. You couldn't tell because there was no face. That's how bad it was. You know what your neighbor's face looks like, right? Okay. But if the face isn't there anymore, you might as well just think it's the daughter of somebody. You know? Fucking nuts. Anyway, he hears the woman scream. He goes to the front door across from his home in the garage, that's where it was happening. Jeffrey was able to go through the sliding glass doors into the yard and then back to his home where he noticed he was stabbed multiple times. So this guy, Austin, picked up a knife that he found in the garage and started stabbing him. Crazy. Wow. Jeffrey ran into the garage. The Austin, the cannibal, the frat boy zombie says... Quote, you don't want to, you don't want this, you don't want any part of this, end quote. And then immediately struck Jeffrey and he fell on the ground. Mm. So, fucking crazy. What do you guys think of this shit? I I don't know, this blows my mind. Yeah. If you want to read this, this, he was taken to St. Mary's Hospital. This is Austin, the frat boy cannibal. And if you want to read uh, this stuff right here. This from the police report. 
He was brought in howling, making animal-like sounds, writhing in contortions, and was not able to provide any form of history. He was handcuffed and had to be sedated in the emergency room. He sustained lacerations to both hands and reportedly also nearly severed off his right thumb. Okay, the the actual injuries is telling. Okay, immediately... They treat him as a drug case. Okay, this is bath salts, another zombie, whatever. But when he gets there, they start to change their out. They start to change their thinking a little bit. This is crazy. The medical treatment he sustained lasted months. He had to have an airway inserted. This is the cannibal frat boy. An airway inserted because he couldn't breathe. Mm. He had to have blood transfusions. He had to have his livers, his liver and kidneys started to fail. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. All right, if it's not drugs, most people don't think it's drugs. Is it some sort of bacteria or something? Because his Mm. fucking liver and kidneys both started to fail. He had to get a feeding tube put into his stomach and because his colon became really infected. Wow. No drug. Wait, why is his colon infected? Is this some kind of sickness? Why Parasite. would his colon his why would yeah, that's what I was thinking. Some sort of fucking biological fucking bullshit. Mm-hmm. His colon was completely infected. And this is all severe. Like this. They had to perform multiple surgeries. They had to do blood transfusions to keep him alive. He had blood clots in his brain. Ooh. You saw a picture of him. He wasn't roughed up too bad. Blood co- clots in his brain. He needed speech therapy. He forgot how to fucking talk. He couldn't talk anymore. He, they had to teach him how to fucking talk. And he couldn't remember anything that happened. That's when I'm like, man, I don't know. You know, mm. at first I thought this was a drug thing. <sighs> I don't know, man. This is something else. Dude. I don't think this is yeah. some drugs. Yeah. This is something else. Now, I'm just going to read this quote again. Help me. I ate something bad to which Sergeant Dykes inquired, well, what did you eat? And then the suspect responded, humans. Oof. Jesus, fuck. You guys like this or not? It's mm, fucking crazy, yeah, it's man. This is crazy shit right here. This is a really good document right here. This is a, a the psychiatry report. I just kind of want to go through it because it, it outlines everything. The two weeks before... All right, let, let's just say right now it's not drugs. There was... On the YouTube channel that he was doing, he was talking about smoking weed and doing mushrooms. That was like his thing or whatever. But in those two weeks, he he's given everything up. Everything. And there was no drugs found in his system. He's given everything up. Is that the problem? No, but the the problem is people think it was drugs. Okay, because if it's a here's the thing, if it's a mental illness, you can't hold this guy responsible. Right. I mean, that's just that's just how our law set up. And I think that's a good thing, dude. uh, This is what I keep thinking about when I think of a story like this. Okay. I take this computer I'm looking at right now. There are people in this world, not me because I'm not smart enough, but computer engineers, whatever, can tell me exactly how everything works in this computer. From the diodes to the ones and zeros to information theory, every fucking thing about this computer, somebody out there can explain in exact detail how it exactly works. You take the brain. You take a neuroscientist, the smartest, the best, the brightest. Not one person on this planet can fucking tell you exactly how the brain works. Okay? So you got to think about that, too, in this story. You know what I'm saying? Like, with mental illness and stuff, in my personal opinion, I think it is a lot to do with, because it's still evolving, we have this organ that is still evolving, and, you know, evolution doesn't get it right all the fucking time. It never gets it right. I mean, obviously, it it gets better and better. That's what evolution is. But in the meantime, you're just stuck with whatever you're fucking getting. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No, no one. I'm just that. That's when when I was thinking of this story. That's kind of what I was trying to remember. You know, Mm. it's like, you know, how are you going to explain this shit? 
anyway. Well, I'm curious what, what the cause of, of the, his medical issues while he was in the hospital was. So the two weeks before, he was an average kid. And this is when things started getting really weird. And if you guys really want to go into this, I'll link this document on talkmore.com. It's only 38 pages. But it goes into the two weeks before. And it seems like he was becoming schizophrenic. And actually, why don't we start with his computer search history for the two weeks before? That'll give us a good basis of where to go. Because this will tell you what he was thinking. I can promise you he didn't set out to do this. So you can't legally help hold him responsible. You can hold him responsible if he took a drug, but we're not thinking he took any drugs. That's the thing, you know? What we're about just, like manslaughter? Still, they, there's you can't hold someone responsible if they if they had no control over their body. If it's a mental illness, all you could do is put them in a, a care unit, you know? You can, I mean, how are you going to hold someone guilty? I mean, your brain could, that's what I'm saying. Like, your brain could fucking act up right now and eat Nicole. Are they going to throw you in prison? I would hope not. This is, I hope I wouldn't eat Nicole, but. This is yeah. two weeks. This is two weeks before the murder on his computer every day. Five surefire ways to overcome fear and anxiety today. This is all Google searches. Beat, beat the anxiety trick. How to overcome chronic anxiety. So obviously he's got anxiety. He's searching for that shit on his computer. How to spot a guy on steroids. What does it... Now this is crazy. The same day, right after he types in how to spot a guy on steroids, he types in what does it mean when people sell their soul to the devil? And then he types in how to sell your soul to the devil. And then There's he, a guidebook. <laughs> You go on down to the crossroads and you would take your guitar with you. Yeah. <laughs> then he said, and then he says, this is crazy. Um, this is a week before he says, what quote, am I crazy in quote really means how to know if you're going crazy tree of knowledge, good and evil, 10 ways to develop incredible charisma and still be yourself. This next one. Read this next one. Am I going crazy? Depression, generalized anxiety, panic, and bipolar disorder. I think I'm going crazy. Am I? <sighs> mm. The next, the very next search, he types in schizophrenia, auditory hallucinations when falling asleep. So he's hearing voices. He's not only hearing voices. I'm gonna get into it. He's seeing demons. Ooh, and and. Guy, I mean, if he planned this whole thing out, or whatever, he took a drug or whatever, he is typing in weeks before that he is having auditory hallucinations when falling asleep. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Something's fucking wrong, man. You, you know what I'm saying? He types in, think you're going crazy. A beginner's guide to psychosis. How can I become more intellectual and have more intellectual conversations? How to switch off an angry person. Difference between mania and peacefulness. I'll also link to his journal on here. This is very telling. He talks about, well, let me talk a little bit about his family right quick. You guys got anything you want to add or anything? Not yet. Mm -mm. Besides the father's depression, which I don't even think that's bad. I mean, I know it's bad, but I mean, it, it's a successful family. There's one video on his YouTube channel of them boating and fishing, and it looks like him and his uncle and his dad are having a great time out mm. there catching bass or whatever. Must be nice. The father, Wade, 61, he describes them as different, kind of loud, and a redneck. Nice guy, has a temper sometimes. Now, his mom and dad... Did get divorced, so the stepmother is uh, Carrie Knowles. His real mother, 51 years old, Mina, uh, she's really nice, somewhat permissive. In fact, she actually calls 911 before this happened, which is another thing. She calls 911 because he just vanishes. You know, he, 
Let, well, actually, let, let me show you the video of him walking out of the restaurant right quick. So they're at a family restaurant. I can't remember which one. But they're at a family restaurant. This is a, right before the murder happened. This is the surveillance video showing him walking out. Yeah, and I'll get to this, but he's he was an FSU student. Smart kid. Yeah. Really smart kid, you know? This is him walking out of the restaurant. That's him right there. And he just walks off from his family, leaving his family at the table and just walks off like, just like a, I don't know, just like a zombie. I mean, I guess I could use that word, right? Yeah. That's exactly what he kind of looks like. Yeah, he did. You could kind of tell. I mean, I know it wasn't like super, super clear, but you can kind of tell he had some type of a gaunt look on his face when he was walking out. Yeah. He was raised religious in both in both this case and the next case. Very religious. So rule number three. He believes in the devil, right? I mean, in, from his searches. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into his religion because it's kind of crazy. May, you know, I mean, all right, the next story in particular, I didn't see it on this story, but a lot of people blame it on voodoo. Hmm. And he was really religious. The bath salts guy. This guy is also religious, but he's kind of, he doesn't know where he wants to be in life. He's fucking 25, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, what is God? What is Krishna? He, he, he's looking up all this stuff and trying to figure it out for himself. He was raised Presbyterian, but he became an atheist at 18. He researched other religions and he thought to himself and this in his journal that religious figures were related to his mental illness. And this is really interesting. I know I'm going off tangent again, but there is a, a study out there that this, uh, I don't know, some kind of neuroscientist put together. It tries to explain, you know how you have prophets. I'm not trying to talk bad about any religion, but I'm, this is a theory. So you got Muhammad, Jesus, Bo- who's the Buddha guy? What's that guy's name? Is his, his name Buddha? Siddhartha. Good- Siddhartha, yeah, Siddhartha, Siddhartha, whatever. All these people hear voices, right? Jesus, Jesus heard God's voice. You know, Muhammad hears uh, Allah's voice. They, they hear they're, they're being talked to by God. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway, this paper that, that I read is kind of fascinating. It says when you have schizophrenia, and if you think of your brain, it's parted into two. And they, they've done studies with split brain patients where if the, I can't remember what it's called, the cerebrum cortex, or whatever, the links both left and right, mm-hmm. if that is split, then you literally have two different people. With two different personalities that don't, if, if you cover like one of them's eye, they're like the left eye, and then have them do something with the right hand, it is two different people. They do not know what each no. side is doing. Two different brains. It yeah. is two different brains and two different people. Wow. The study that I read goes into saying, okay, what if these prophets were really suffering from some kind of schizophrenia where their brain was split like that and when they're hearing god they are really hearing something but it's their other personality which they take as god because if they don't they'll just know they're fucking crazy or something and it drive them crazy so they have to they have to say this must be god i must be chosen because i am literally getting talked to in my head all day long isn't that fucking crazy? It makes sense. That's going to make a lot of uh, people who are religious very upset. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm not saying, not, not that you're not, you didn't say that. You're just regurgitating an article. Yeah, dude, I grew up Southern Baptist, man. Fuck. I mean, I got an open mind, though. I mean, I'm not saying that's true or not. Re- religious, you can't prove to me God exists. A scientist can't prove to me God doesn't exist. We just don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. I mean, might as well, you know, if God is really, might as well get baptized and shit like that. And when you get to heaven, you be like, damn, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> Shit. Just in case. Anyway, he was, re- sorry, I didn't mean to get on a can tangent there. He was an average student. I mean, decent student. He got into FSU, Tallahassee, biology major. He joined Alpha Delta Phi, 
That's why he's a frat boy cannibal. He started failing out. He moved to tech school. I don't think that has anything to do with this story per se, just because he fell out of school. I mean, shit, I I couldn't even get into a real fucking college. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't think that has anything to do specifically with the story. It's just some of his background. But when someone searches or tells someone, quote, I don't think I'm going crazy, end quote. That's when you may want to worry. When someone's <laughs> typing in, I don't think I'm going crazy, or says that to you, you need to fucking take notice, man. It talks about his background, born December 21st, 1996 in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. One sister, Haley, his parents divorced when he was 13 years old. His dad is a dentist, and even his father noticed within the two weeks before that because his son was working at the dental practice with him mm -hmm. and this guy his son started being really outgoing and he's usually been very uh introverted hmm. and he started talking to patients more and and even to the point of inappropriateness mm. saying things you know sexual things like basically everything i say <laughs> you know but he's doing it in a professional environment so even the father know knew something was going on as far as drugs go, he tries basic stuff in college, marijuana, alcohol, Adderall, but it's nothing that was found in his system at the time of the murder. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's been having episodes of sleep paralysis before this murder happened. He has never had any mental health treatment for counseling. Uh, up to this point, sometimes he could not move or walk in a waking state. On one occasion, he felt like he was abducted by aliens, mm. which at this point, dude, you might have fucking been. <laughs> I, mean, I am not fucking putting uh, anything past anything. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? It could be demons, aliens, drugs. Who the fuck knows? No one knows. OK, now this is really important. He started to think of himself as some sort of prophet a supernatural prophet and i'm not i'm not making fun of this because this is really what he he went through let's see interesting. i mean it sounds like he wasn't a bad person he just had like a. it's interesting weird... though that like something so there were a lot of things that that were you know per pertinent for years with him like he was you know had depressive disorder for <laughs> a number of years since he was a teenager but like, what was it in the last two weeks? Was there a medical event, and that was part of what had him in the hospital with no, all these was, things? No, there was. That's a good question. This is the two weeks before. So the two weeks before, he he was visiting his girlfriend, and she noticed that he was starting to research philosophy, religion, and the Illuminati. He was. And this is funny. He he was preoccupied with philosophical and religious leaders, including Tony Robbins. Like that motherfucker is a religious leader. Mm -hmm. I guess people think of him like that. Lincoln and Krishna. He became interested in yin and yang. So he's. I mean. Just a whole smattering of things. He believed that he could, if you want to read this. Mr. Huruf be believed that he could manipulate the water while sterilizing dental instruments at work. What? He believed that the water served as a source of power for him. The water would sculpt to my hands. The water gave him added energy, which would go inside him. He believed that he could bless the water, which would cause it to be sterilized. He concluded he was special and that no one else could direct the water the way that he could. Certain sound like a little guy we know. Doesn't Moses? It? I mean... All right, then this next paragraph says, Mr. Haraf developed a belief that he would be the next great civil rights leader. He fasted like Gandhi. He changed his phone screensaver to a picture of Gandhi. He wanted to, quote, unite everyone. He believed that he had special charisma. He indicated that he could talk to anyone without caring what they thought of him. On Friday, August 12th, is two days before the murder, he thought he had superpowers. He felt like, Quote, I was Jesus. I mean, we all feel like that all the time, right? You know, it's funny. Whenever we you cover, <laughs> whenever we sit down on Sundays to record, 
the random shit you say before we go to sleep at night suddenly makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I told her. I told her, I mean, what was it? Well, it also makes sense. Like, we read something about creepypasta, and you're like, hey, let's, what if we did this thing about creepypasta? And I was yeah. like, okay, like, I just don't, some, you're, yeah. you've read things, and I'm like, where is this coming from? Yeah, that makes sense. And then you, you made some comment about a prophet, and I was like, where the fuck no, are you I mean, getting this from? Not, and they she come from started stories. to feel concerned about your mental health, but actually they you're getting it from, from your stories. resources. Yeah. Your research. I mean, God has always talked through me. Right. Okay. You know, and okay, let's not go there. I mean, I am the second coming no, of Jesus. No, let's not go there. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Let's keep going. He felt a responsibility as a Jesus like person to try to solve problems of other people. He he walked in a slow, harmonious manner. He actually started wearing light clothing. If you look at his YouTube video, he's only wearing white because he believed the dark was evil. He was seeing dark shadows at night when he was in bed. He developed an insight into good and evil. He believed that evil forces were coming after him. He felt evil forces in his home. He felt the devil was out to get him and his sister. He believed that all people in his mother's home were at risk of being killed. He moved his mattress from his new bedroom to his old bedroom so he could be closer to everyone. Oh, yeah. Jen, oh, his, his dog's name was Hubble. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is crazy. On Saturday, August 13, 2006, he became more preoccupied birthday. with his horoscope and focused on the fact that as a Sagittarius, he was half horse, half man, a centaur. He and shares my birthday. He was looking this up. He actually thought he was a centaur. In fact, he actually ran out into traffic in front of a car and would jump on the car and pretend, or not pretend, think he was a horse. He had a horse legs. He has what, he shares, sad He shares him. my birthday. Yeah, it's fucking really sad, isn't it? Yeah. It's really fucking sad, man. He thinks people are the devil. He actually feared an evil spirit would kill him. Shit, I think an evil spirit had gotten into him or something. Mm. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. He started wearing his grandmother's stone. This is a day before the murder. For protection. His stone cross. His stone cross for protection. Okay. For fucking protection from what? The devil. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? He at the at a gun show with his father, he purchased snake jerky because he believed that he was destroying evil by eating the snake jerky. Ew, I wonder how he that based this it. on a Bible story in which a snake deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. I mean, dude, this is some crazy fucking shit. And he's searching all this stuff in his fucking computer and typing in his journal. I'm not crazy. I don't think I'm crazy. Do you think I'm crazy journal? Why are you not talking back to me, Journal? I mean, holy tits, man. You know? He believed he was half dog, half man, and sometimes half horse, half man. He thought he had heightened intuition that he described as a sixth sense, and he could tell whether people are good or evil. Could he tell if people were dead or alive? No, but I think he saw... Well, actually, he does say this, that he saw the... To the lady in the garage, the one he killed Karen, as a demon. You know, he saw her as some kind of demon. I mean, he believes he's invincible. Cars went around him. He would walk in the middle of the street. He believed he was invincible. I, I ran super fast. I mean, look, at this is just, you can't even write this shit. Mm. Stephen King couldn't even come up with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just crazy, man. It's just crazy. He was feeling godlike. He had a special relationship to God. He believed his anatomy was changing he, and he was getting bigger and more muscular and he was in charge of his own destiny. He felt that he knew all the religions and God was speaking to him. It's just getting progressively more fucking chaotic and his family seeing it. His his mom calls 911 before this even happens because she's so fucking worried about this, mm. you know? I mean, what do you guys think? I, I mean, there's definitely a, like a downward spiral. Here. Yeah, and it gets it gets worse and worse and worse. And it seems like it's happening like it gets progressively worse as each day goes on. It like yeah. is exponential. It seems so. All right, let, let's let's look at 
from the murder f- perspective right quick. Okay, when Mr. If you want to read kind of this right here, this is when he, this is the day of the murder. When Mr. Haruf returned to Duffy's, his father grabbed him by the shirt. He pulled back his fist, but decided not to hit his father when Carrie asked him not to. He left the restaurant a second time. He wanted to teach him, his father, a lesson by walk by walking home alone and showing him that he was able to get to his father's house without his assistance. He was feeling invincible. Yeah. So you remember seeing the video? He had the backwards hat. This is the day of. He says he had a vague recollection of throwing his phone down at his mom's house. He may have put his Trump hat at this time. It was a red hat. He put it on backwards. He, quote, put it on backwards so it would propel him forward, end quote. The two weeks leading up to this, he would drink Wesson oil. I had to look that up. Oh, That's the no. shit we got That's in like the cooking the oil. Cooking oil. So it says he would drink it. They The family took it away from him. He just kept drinking this fucking Wesson oil. Maybe. Is that why he was having health challenges? He says he did not recall drinking Wesson oil at his mother's house. But but they would. The mother said they would take it away from him. The whole bottle. He would chug it. This fucking Wesson oil. It's like it's, it's cooking oil. oil. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it's that crazy? You. So he says he left. The restaurant a second time. And he was going to walk home. He was going to walk home. So this is how he came across. Yeah, exactly. This house. He's walking okay. home. He is follow- he's quote, following the stars, end quote, and running. So he came upon this garage at full fucking sprint. At nine o'clock, at nine o'clock, when his auditory hallucinations usually kick in before he goes to bed, it's nine fifteen. He is running at full fucking sprint. He's been chugging Wesson oil all day. You know, he sees in the garage a demon. Literally, probably what he's saying, a fucking demon laughing at him, pointing at him. I'm going to fucking kill you. I mean, I'm not making fun of it. That's probably what he's fucking seeing. Yeah. So he runs up in there and he says, and this is exactly what happened. He says about three quarters of the way to his father's home, Mr. Harof saw a dark figure with a white face. He thought of the figure as evil. The figure said, hey, Austin. He recognized the voice as Daniel, a friend of his cousin from childhood. When he had known Daniel, he had thought about him as a bad guy. He believed that Daniel was trying to kill him. He spr- he sprinted away, screaming with terror. He made a left turn and saw a white light from a garage. Screaming in terror. He ran towards the lighted garage and asked for help in getting home. He did not have a memory of what he planned to say, but he perceived the lighted garage as an area of safety in his terror. He next recalled seeing a woman in the garage and her screaming at him. He thought that she was a witch because of the way she was screaming. He screamed when she screamed because he was scared. He did not recall having any conversation with her. He thinks she had brown hair. He was fearful in a panic state from seeing the dark figure and hearing her screams. He was afraid he would be harmed. He had a vague recollection of picking up a machete or something and stabbing the woman and biting her. He believed that he was a dog at the time of biting her. He was unsure of the sequence of events in the garage. His best recollection was that he drank a bottle of alcohol or something while in the garage after stabbing the woman. He picked up he picked up a bottle of antifreeze and oh, started no. chugging it. Oh, oh no. so that's what this health <laughs> problems came from. He picked it just randomly. And this is Important with the next case, too. In both cases, the perpetrator was extremely, extremely thirsty, which immediately the medical providers took as their own drugs. Because if you do those drugs, ecstasy is a big one. You do Mm -hmm. ecstasy, you drink a lot of water. So he is biting the face off. He grabs the first bottle he fucking sees. He doesn't even know what it is. So he chugs antifreeze. Okay. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Um, He next recalled seeing a guy in the doorway and a dog. I think I stabbed him too. He had some recollection of a man with a mustache wearing a white shirt, but he was uncertain whether this was the woman's husband or the neighbor who came over to help. He recalled a guy yelling at him. All right. That's That's probably good. If you go through this, you can see that even his family knew something was off two weeks before so and it looks 
as the psych the psychiatrist did a really good job on this. I mean, he <laughs> thorough report, a thorough, very yeah. thorough report, which is extremely helpful. He, if you go through this, you can see the two weeks before he gets more and more deranged, not deranged, but more disassociative or disassociative with society and reality. Yeah. He is completely disconnected from reality. He is thinking he's a half horse, half man. He is jumping out in front of the traffic. I mean, he he is just he and he knows he's going crazy. Friday, August 12th, a few days before the murder. Quote, I don't think I am going crazy. I'm just evolving. If you if you journal, I don't think I'm going crazy. You're obviously having doubts. I'm not trying to be funny, but that is some serious shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, he he probably should have sought out some m- <sighs> mental health counseling at some point. I mean, they would have... Just to kind of help him feel less alone in it. And you can tell he's got a, a, a sense of uh, grandiose grandiosity, too, right before this happens. But I don't know. that That's that story. He He's actually still... He's still awaiting. No one knows what they're going to do with him, to be honest. So did um, both of um, the victims, they were both killed? Or yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were both killed. Um, but the neighbor survived. Yeah, the, the neighbor called 911. And I'll put all these documents on, uh, on talkmore.com. To be honest, man, you can't hold this guy accountable. Is He didn't plan it. I don't think he did it. And if there is a drug, which we're going to talk about in the next episode, because there may be, they can't test everything. That These synthetic compounds are changing so rapidly mm. that they can't see if it's a drug or not that he's doing. And with the next story, it may have been a drug and he may have ingested it without even knowing it. Mm. Like, you know, hey, can I smoke some of that joint? Or th- there was even a a scare that these people in Florida wouldn't accept business cards anymore because they think there's some stuff on the business card. And when you take the business card from someone, it it absol- absolves into your skin. Kind of like secondhand anthrax. Or- <clears throat> yeah. And it, and it may be a, an actual biotechnical fucking chemical. Like there's something in South America that's called devil's breath. And it's supposed to be the the world's dangerous drug. And what it does is usually you breathe it in. So somebody will kind of shoot some at you and you breathe it in without knowing. It makes you completely lose your sense of free will. That's all it does. It makes you say yes to anything what these people this is like in colombia and all these places they'll administer this drug and then tell people to go empty out their bank accounts they'll tell people to go kill people what is the substance oh (laughs) it's called devil's breath i am definitely interested yeah in what this is but that is i mean it's yeah i'll show you i mean i've never heard it's called uh it's a plant, and all these are soca scopolamine, devil's breath right here. It's crazy. Colombian Colombia criminals are using it to put people in a zombie-like state. They go out to a party and then wake up two or three days later on a park bench. They arrive here without their belongings or their money. This is coming from the people treating these patients. So they would administer this somehow to them, and it makes them... I mean, usually it's for financial gain, but that shit's scary, dude. Imagine somebody like Kim Jong-un or somebody putting that shit in her fucking water, you know? Interesting. Nazi angel of death Joseph Mengele used sclopamine in interrogations as a kind of truth serum. Mm. Crazy fucking shit. Wow. Since the 1970s, Colombian criminals have been using it in order to rape women, empty out houses and apartments, and even abduct children. They would just be like, hey, give me your kids. Okay. Take them. It's fucked up. That is fucked, yo. Yeah. So, I mean. That's scary. (laughs) Since the 70s, man. 
So, and where's, you know, that's the thing with these cases, man. Where's the fucking, where are they going to do trial runs at this shit? Obviously, Florida, that's where it comes into America. Mm. Right there. Through fucking Florida and the devil's asshole. Florida. <laughs> that's where it comes through. So, obviously, that's the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one. I don't think I've heard that one. But I don't know. What do you guys think of that fucking story? Sorry, it's long. It's crazy. So, he's not been charged or he's been charged he's been charged with manslaughter but they're not sure what they're gonna do it's a hard one i mean like sh- what are what are we what are we able to do to make sure this person is not a danger to himself or others well he needs to be institutionalized but right. yeah, institutionalized exactly. but then that what happens then there's only until they get where they're no longer a danger to society. We did the Vince Lee story. Same yeah. thing. He's no longer a danger. What else are you going to do? Kill him? Put him in lockup? If he didn't know he was doing it, and I can goddamn guarantee you, ain't nobody premeditates biting and eating someone's face and spitting out the flesh in a garage. It, do, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just like even, you know, hopefully the, in, I don't know. Like, he, he may not have premeditated it, but two people still died. Yeah. And he's... Look at this knife, Nicole. <sighs> Jesus God. Christ, dude. That's him right there. I mean, he is just... Look, he's it missing his like, fucking yeah. teeth. Ugh. I mean, look at... This is a crime scene. I'll put all these photos on talkmore.com. This is the taser. This is a big-ass fucking taser right here. Jen, if you get hit with this, you fucking going down. And this is him, like, in prison. I mean, the craziest fucking shit I have ever fucking seen. And ain't nobody has heard of this fucking shit. I don't know. That's wild. But, Mm. yeah, as of now, let me see. Unless anything has changed, they're still waiting to kind of see what they're going to do. This is from Jacksonville.com. The uh, headline says, three years later, Austin Haruf case still puzzles many. And he is facing first degree murder charges. But honestly, they ain't, they're not going to get it, man. You know, because, I mean, he didn't mean he, he didn't have any control know. over his body. Right. Yeah, I mean, he, you know. At first, I thought this was a drug case. And the next one, too, that we're going to cover, thought it was a drug case. But then you start looking into it. Drug cases don't take fucking two weeks of a downward spiral until yeah. full-blown mania. No, That's this, not is, drugs, this is clearly dude. not. Mm-hmm. This is clearly Unless not. it's a drug that a- it takes that long to act, you know. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Maybe it's a new sort of drug that kind of just builds up and builds up. I think we would have heard other other th- similar things happening though, yeah. if that was the case. But, you know, that's one other thing you gotta ask. Like, why is this shit happening only in Florida? It's probably because there's somebody's fucking testing this shit. The new drugs or whatever. Could be. I yeah. mean, we saw that one show, remember Narco, Narc Inc. or whatever, where these drug dealers, uh, this one's like, man, I had some, I, I get, you know, I saw some shit the other day that completely, it was like fentanyl completely killed two two of my users killed them dead the next morning i had fiends stacking up in my doorstep to buy all i could there's shit that just killed two people they want it stronger and stronger and stronger that's a problem man i don't know man that's crazy anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that case we're going to keep the zombie theme going here. Got a short story for Friday. Very short. It's about the bath salt zombies. I just want to kind of get it out there. I'm going to put the video on there. We'll watch the video. And the guy actually survived. And he ain't living no life I don't want to live. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, go to talkmore.com. We do live chat too. We're talking to you guys. So talkmore.com slash join. And until next time. My name is John, and I'm here with Jen and Nicole. Good night, you lovely, lovely people.